What's going on, guys? In today's video, we're going to go over how you can study for the math section correctly for the upcoming digital SAT. And before we start, there's a lot of confusion on this. The digital SAT only starts for international students starting March of 2023. For people in the US, it's not going to start until the March of 2024. And because the digital SAT is so new, there's a lot of confusion on how to study for it. And for me personally, I focus on the math section. So I did some research on it, took the four official practice exams from the official College Board website. And the good news is that there's not much of a difference, but there are a few key nuances you want to be aware of. So with that all being said, let's get straight into it. So the first thing you need to know is that the 96% of the exam is actually staying the same, whether it be digital or paper, the content that's going to be tested on the exam is going to stay the same. And the reason I say 96% is because there are 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. If you've been following me for a while, I have made this, this little list of all the concepts that you need to know for the SAT in order. And of these 25 concepts, only one of them are going away. And that is complex numbers. And that's going to be concept number 15 on the list. Remember those questions with I's in it or radical with a negative number on the inside? Those are complex numbers and they are actually not going to be tested on the digital SAT anymore, which is kind of sad news because I personally like those and my students also did too, because they are such an easy SAT score boosters. There were only like two things you need to know. And if you know these two things, You'll never miss complex number questions again, but sadly, all the good things have to come to an end and those things are not going to be tested anymore. So if you're wondering, what am I supposed to study for the math section of 40 digital SAT? It's the exact same thing that you've been studying for the paper SAT, just without the complex numbers. And the second thing you need to know are going to be these new types of questions. So content wise, we know that these questions are all staying the same of the 25 concepts, 24 are going to stay the same. There's no new concept that you need to know, but there's going to be new variations of these 24 concepts. What I mean by that is if you look at this exponent question, you probably have seen something similar to this before on the paper SAT. This question is testing you on converting fractional exponents into radicals. And that was on the paper SAT for the longest time. However, this is going to be the new variation of the existing concept for the digital SAT. For you to solve this question, you have to actually multiply the exponent of the original expression by 11 over 11. And that's how you get to the answer. And that was something that was never done on the paper SAT. You couldn't even think of that. And if you think you got the answer, leave it in the comment section down below. So the main takeaway here is the concept itself of fractional and radical exponents are staying the same, but the idea of multiplying by something like 11 over 11, that's going to be new. And that's going to be the new variation for the digital SAT. And what I can tell you based on my experience is that these questions are actually getting harder, which brings us to the third point. For me personally, I like to think that there are three types of SAT math questions, easy, medium, and hard questions. So easy and medium questions are staying pretty much the same level. They're not getting easier, but they're also not getting harder. However, the hard questions, the last category, these questions are essentially a little bit getting tiny bit exponentially harder than how it was on the paper SAT. That could be due to the fact that calculator is now allowed on both of the math sections. But the thing is, numbers are getting bigger and the question itself is getting more complicated and SAT is getting more creative with these concepts. A quick example on that is remember the exponent question on the paper SAT, all you had to do was either convert that fractional exponent into radicals or simplify the fractional exponent and then convert into radicals. That's all you have to do. But for the digital SAT, they're asking you to multiply it by 11 over 11 and numbers are now getting bigger. It's getting more complicated and you have to be trained to recognize that you have to multiply it by 11 over 11 and not like three over three or four over four. And that's the key thing. They're now requiring your ability to think of 11 over 11 when you look at that question. So that's one way that the questions are getting harder. And there's a second way that the questions are getting harder. Something that I recognize is, having a surface knowledge of the concept is no longer sufficient. You actually have to have a very deep understanding of the concepts in order for you to get these hard questions. So a quick example on this is going to be discriminant, which is a popular topic on the SAT. People know that in order for you to find discriminant, it's going to be B squared minus four AC. That gives you the value of discriminant for a quadratic function. And most people have the surface understanding of the formula. They know what A is, B is, and what C is, and the value that it gives out. But many people don't know what exactly discriminant is for, for the SAT. And on the SAT, discriminant serves two purposes. One is that it shows the number of X intercepts, and two, it shows the number of intersections between a line and a parabola. 
That's the two purposes of discriminants for the SAT, and that's the deep understanding. But the problem is people just know the formula, but they don't know when and how to use the formula. So we got a little sidetracked there, but for the digital SAT, here's everything you need to know. One is that there are 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT, but for the digital SAT, take out complex numbers, you only need to know the 24 concepts, which are going to be listed out over here. I'm going to link it in the description box down below. And second, there are no new concepts. They're not going to suddenly test you on logs or anything like that. However, they're going to test you on new variations of the existing 24 concept. And with these new variations, these questions are getting harder. And in order for you to solve all of these questions and all the hard questions, you have to have a steep understanding of the concepts. Having a surface understanding of the concept might have gotten you through the paper SAT, but for the digital SAT, that's not gonna cut it. If you don't have a deep understanding of the concept, then you're gonna miss out on a lot of questions. So if there's one thing to keep in mind while you're studying for the math section, is that you have to have a deep understanding of the 24 concepts that are tested on the SAT. And that's going to be the only deciding factor on whether you hit your target score or not hit your target score. Keep on studying, keep on prepping. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys in the next video.